guys, this guy is here for a bath, and the reason is clear. This is a teddy, and teddies have these this hair that will do this. The last teddy video I showed you also has this, this hair that is really easy to come out. And I always think that this is some kind of a fungus that is causing it, which is why I always advocate to do your teddies a little more often, give them baths a little more often. So just to avoid this, okay? So right now, he's going to get a bath, and then we're gonna see what he looks like after his bath, how pretty he's gonna be. Now we already cleaned his ears, unfortunately, we can't show you that, but yes, they were big teddy ears, they were all full of stuff. So let's see what he looks like when he's done. Okay? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hey. So I always start with the body first, for the first wash. You have to make sure you work behind the ears, the whole face area. You have to make sure the entire body surface is covered. Including the face. Yep. Yeah, a lot That's of people don't like doing the face. No, you have to do the face. And then also another thing that people aren't aware of. It's okay. If they stress, just give them a minute to relax like that but it's important to do, it's okay for the water to get in the ears. You obviously do not want to get it into the nose or jaw or mouth. You don't want them to aspirate, but it's totally fine for it to get on the ears. They'll so shake their ears, get it out, and you can take a Q-tip and wipe it out. So now we're gonna do another lather up. We're gonna do another lather up and let that sit for a while. sure that the product doesn't just go on the surface of the hair you need to work it all the way in to the skin especially with the teddies and that includes all the feet between the nails here cheeks ears other side really work it in once he's completely lathered, you do need to let it sit to soak in. It doesn't do any good to lather him up and not let the product activate. Because we use this shampoo, the Davis Myconazole, which we love this one. It's specially formulated for pets and it is an antifungal product. So the reason we use that is because guinea pigs are extremely, extremely um, susceptible to get fungus. We see it again and again and again and it's one of the most common things that guinea pigs get is ringworm. So by doing your regular baths and washing them in this shampoo will definitely make, make so that they are probably never going to like, never going to get it. I mean, yeah, it's only preventative. All the spores. Yeah. yeah, you're killing all the spores with every single uh, or at least keeping them down because I don't know if you can kill them all. I mean, they're just uh, Most guinea pigs in the pet stores unfortunately come with ringworm already So they already carry it with them and to kill well, it's not easy to kill a fungus. So this This routine bathing your guinea pigs at least every three months with this shampoo helps now What we just what we just saw when the hair just came out that easily I, I always have a feeling that that is caused by a fungus, and it, it, it seems to affect teddies the most. So giving teddies a, a, a few more extra baths, rather than you know, just your every three months, maybe just add another two a year in there, um, will definitely prevent that from happening as well. I've noticed that that definitely works. All right, Claire, go on, what are we doing? Uh, we're just working the product in. We're gonna let it soak for a minute, making sure to get all around the nose. And that's so Under the chin important. Here. Yes. And he's about ready for the rinse. And you put the shampoo right on his face as well. You take a little clot of it and you just yep. like... Yeah, you emulsify it in your fingertips um, and then you just work it in. And if you're worried about the eyes, you can apply an eye, an ophthalmic lubricant to the eye and it'll coat the surface of the eye to protect it to make sure no shampoo gets in there. But this shampoo does not uh, sting. This is a special pet shampoo. Yeah, so he's good. There you go, buddy. 
Yeah, and that's good there. Nice scratchy there. Right there where all the hair is loose, so we can get all of it loose and the medication onto the skin. Yeah, I noticed during the health check he's got quite a bit of hair loss right in this thigh area. So you just want to make sure to get all the surface. As and, well. and that will probably start to grow back once he's had this nice little bath. Okay, buddy, there you go. Okay, so we're really rinsing out real good. Thanks, buddy. Get cold. They really don't like the cooler temperature, so always make sure you've got, um, you're checking the temperature. This one fluctuates a little bit, so I'm giving him a break. Oh, buddy. I'm sorry, buddy, but you're feeling so good afterwards. Yeah. And it's okay. There you go. And when you're bathing, you always want to make sure to really support the whole body. Their spines are kind of fragile, so you always want to make sure they're being supported. And you can um, use your, your um, because you're you're Claire, you're the one who's doing all the baths. You, you're here Tuesday and Wednesdays, and people make appointments for your expert expertly uh, applied baths and uh, health checks. Now, how often have you seen guinea pigs that haven't had a bath for a while, where the bath water is literally like really really dark color? Yeah, uh, it's quite common. The the problem is, you know, guinea pigs have a limited space. So unless you're cleaning every day, every other day, they're literally sitting in their urine and in um, their fecal matter and food. So people, some people who are sort of anti-bath say, oh, you know, in the nature, they don't get a bath. Well, they're not in nature. They're literally in a eight foot square cage, hopefully minimally. Um, and they're not able to run around miles and miles. And in nature, quite honestly, they also die when they're a few months to a year old through predators and whatnot. So it's not nature. This is us doing responsible caretaking of a creature that we've brought into our lives. Um, well so. said. Thank you. All right, buddy. Thank you. All done. All done. Okay, so now we're going to see later when he is all dry. Okay, so he's done. He's been dry. He looks beautiful. And look how different he looks. Let's see the back. Let's see. Now, look at that. This is beautiful. This is how he's supposed to look all the time. So where you're not going to be able to just pull out. Look at that. You pull out some little hair, sure, but not like the dandruffy hair with the, you know, pieces of skin at the end when you pull it out. So you look beautiful. Yes, you're a whole new piglet and you're shiny. You look how beautiful the coat is now, how shiny it is. And that is what happens when you bathe your guinea pig. So it's not just about getting them clean, but you're getting them shiny too. But seriously, guys, um, I notice there's some people that don't want to bathe their guinea pigs, but I honestly urge you, or just, you know what, challenge. Why don't you do it one time? and just keep your bath water and just see the bath water and see what comes off it and um, look at it and then decide because I promise you that if your guinea pig is you know at least like over a year old and it's your first bath that your bath water is going to be dirty and then you're going to know that it's it's probably a good idea to you know and even if you do it once a year just put just at least give them a bath at some points okay um, but yeah, he looks great. You're beautiful. You can go to the dates. You can go to the prom, whatever you want to go. You look like a dapper, beautiful, well-groomed gentleman.